Hello there, I'm Alfred Weber and today is Saturday, July 16, 2011 and once again we're with independent scientist Loren Murray who's coming to us from Berkeley, California. Welcome. Thank you, Alfred. Loren. Well, you know, today's um, update that we can summarize as follows nuclear genocide of babies and children in Japan, the United States, and Canada grows and is documented is a very sobering one. And um, that is uh, what the data has now come back since our last program. And I guess that this is going to be a very sobering uh, episode of our update uh, and I I just wondered you you call it the third nuclear war uh, for Japan and the US that's correct the uh, three nuclear wars that have been carried out in Japan already are the Hiroshima and Nagasaki atomic bombing in World War II, 1945. We're uh, coming very close to the anniversary, August 6th, when Hiroshima was bombed, August 6th in Japan, and August 9th in Japan when Nagasaki was bombed. And um, those were uh, bombs that were produced under the uh, Manhattan Project and None of the scientists and all of the military were completely opposed. I mean, all of the scientists and all of the military were completely opposed to dropping them on a human population. So that was the beginning of the nuclear wars and the depopulation agenda, which is being carried out by the Anglo-Dutch monarchies and the international financiers, uh, the Rothschilds and uh, whoever they represent in the city of London, and the Rockefellers in Wall Street. So, um, uh, the coolest thing about radiation, it can be whatever you want it to be. It's a spin doctor's dream. But, everything about radiation can be manipulated. So yes, it's a spinner's dream. And I never really thought about the extent to which it was true until now. Um, John Goffman encountered this spin, and certainly the scientists I work with have, uh, including the Russians um, studying Chernobyl, uh, the scientists I worked with in the U.S. to collect 6,000 baby teeth from children living around nuclear power plants. And, um, and now the, the depleted uranium, so Fukushima is just more radiation added on top of this. And John, John Goffman encountered this spin when he was working with radioactive isotopes. He was an associate director at the Livermore Nuclear Weapons Lab and he was hired from UC Berkeley to specifically study the effects of ionizing radiation on biological systems. And when he began uh, accurately reporting his findings at international scientific meetings, all of his funding was cut and the house next door to him was burned to the ground in San Francisco, he told me as a warning. So, um, some government officials said, basically, you know, to Goffman and others, so what? They'll get cancer years from now. <clears throat> but we need nuclear energy now. Time delay helps. If people are not lying on the ground trying not, not to vomit while they're bleeding out of their noses and their mouths, the nuclear apologist can say, hey, He's fine. We never laid a hand on him. So this hidden agenda of depopulation and weakening countries that pose a threat 
is being repeated by impacting the vibrant developing economies in Asia with long lingering illnesses from radiation poisoning and mutilation of the genetic future of vast populations. And that now includes North America, Canada, the U.S., Mexico, and all this radiation from Fukushima is ending out uh, washing up on the shores of Hawaii, Guam, and other Pacific Islands. And um, within about two weeks, it was already into the Southern Hemisphere. So this is a global nuclear holocaust, and it will also have a tremendous effect on the, um, the sea mammals, such as whales and walruses, sea lions, um, uh, orcas. Uh, it's going to really uh, have a terrible impact on the oceans, too. Dolphins. Dolphins, that's right. And, of course, orcas are large dolphins. They're not exactly. really whales. So, um, so I'm going to start with an article that was published and written by Dr. Jeanette Sherman, who I have worked with for 10 years on the baby teeth study. And she published this on June the 9th, 2011, in Counterpunch. And um, what she found was a dramatic 35% spike in infant mortality on the west coast of the U.S., since um, uh, March 11th, uh, when the Fukushima earthquake happened. And uh, she and Dr. Joe Mangano went to the Centers for Disease Control data, which uh, uh, every county in the United States has to report their vital statistics, births and deaths, disease rates, um, causes of death, so forth and so on. And um, what they did was they took that data for infant mortality and uh, for the cities of Boise, Idaho, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, plus California City, Santa Cruz, Sacramento, San Francisco, San Jose, and Berkeley. And they looked at the, um, the changes in infant mortality for about five or six weeks before the Fukushima disaster and the four months afterwards. And they did find a 35% increase in infant mortality in just four months. That is astounding. That is statistically significant. And there better be a reason and answer about why this happened. Now, immediately, they were attacked from uh, the nuclear establishment globally, and uh, even scientists in Japan said that they were not factual and, and uh, they were exaggerating and they, they saw no change in Japan and so forth and so on. And on, uh, on June the 21st, the Scientific American attacked them and looked at the numbers they used and said they had uh, misrepresented the data and the information and come to the wrong conclusion. Well, that was really interesting because um, there were uh, comments after the Scientific American article and some of the readers actually, well, the Scientific American recalculated and said they had made a mistake, but other readers uh, actually cherry-picked uh, the uh, Scientific American accused Dr. Sherman of cherry-picking the cities. So um, the critics uh, cherry-picked four cities, Portland, Tacoma, Seattle, and Spokane, and calculated the infant mortality since March 11th. And it had increased actually 42%. Uh, just in those four cities since March 11th. So it actually backfired on the critics and strongly supported the findings of Dr. Sherman and Dr. Mangano. So um, it must be higher in the Northwest. This is in British Columbia and Washington State because there's higher rainfall there. 
And the radiation contamination on the ground depends on two factors, weather and geography. So this is uh, this higher rate in North, the northwestern North America would also be consistent with the geography and the weather. Well, you know, um, here in British Columbia, Canada, not only the government, but uh, sort of uh, people who are caught up inside the government meme, uh, such as people who are associated with um, a government infiltrated radio stations like Vancouver Co-op Radio, are sending out emails and news that this 35% spike in infant mortality is actually the parents' fault. Do you have any comment on that? I sure do. Uh, this is all coming from the Health Physics Society in the United States. It's called the SPIN that I described at the beginning of, of our interview. And um, when there was extensive bombing of Yugoslavia, with uh, depleted uranium weapons for the first three days, there was no ground action. And um, the, it, there was a huge NATO attack on Yugoslavia in 1998. For the first three, three days, they were never on the ground. It was, a, it was a carpet bombing campaign by the NATO forces. And um, the UN had asked countries surrounding Yugoslavia, including the Yugoslavia, radiation uh, uh, monitoring laboratory to, uh, to monitor for uranium in the air. And all these countries, Greece, Italy, uh, Yugoslavia, Hungary, all reported large increases in uranium in the air filters and the ground filters they were using, and also uh, a very large increase in nanoparticles in the atmosphere, that's the depleted uranium. And these very tiny particles that form a radioactive gas are caused by the high temperatures that are reached when uranium burns. And certainly that's happened at Fukushima too. Uh, they've had a lot of uh, accidents and there have been four explosions, three explosions, um, and a number of actual nuclear events which Dr. Busby has confirmed were criticality. So we've had nothing but releases into the ocean and the atmosphere since March 11th, and it's not over. Uh, it's continuing um, every day. So what has happened is that after the attacks on Dr. Sherman uh, and Joseph Mangano, they wrote another article uh, which was published on June 25th, and they went back for 10 years for Centers for Disease Control data, and they found that the increase in infant mortality since March 11th is even higher uh, compared to the last 10 years than what they calculated as 35%. And um, this is going to grow. The babies are the very first to die. And then on July 5th, uh, just a week and a half later, um, the Canadian uh, Public Health or their radiation uh, group it reported a mortality spike in British Columbia that confirms what Dr. Sherman found. And, of course, the Canadians said, oh, it's a, a, a sudden infant crib syndrome. It's uh, the parents are sleeping with the baby, so on and so forth. And the, um, the British Medical Journal, um, uh, what's it called? Um, Lancet. Lancet reported that there were uh, clusters of mysterious infant mortality in 20 regions of Europe. And this is after the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia with uranium. 